2019 general election just around the corner. How prepared is the nation? And that's where we go today on Weekend File. Good evening and welcome to the program. Elections in Nigeria have always been high-stakes affairs and the build-up to the 2019 election is accompanied by unprecedented levels of tension and anxiety. Come February 16, just seven days away, Nigerians will vote for the next president, deciding who will lead Africa's largest economy and most populous black nation in the world. They will also be electing federal and state legislators and governors. Preparations are in top gear as the stakeholders are putting finishing torches to set the stage to the long-awaited 2019 general elections. And just recently, the National Council of State expressed satisfaction with the level of preparations by INEC for the conduct of the elections. But Security conditions in the pre, during, and post-election periods will also, uh, of course, uh, to a large extent, impact the umpire's ability to execute the polls. With the release of election guidelines by INEC, are the electorates and politicians willing to abide by the rules and regulations? What are the expected rules of domestic and international observers? Another pertinent issue on our desk tonight is that of collection of permanent voters' cards. 84 million Nigerians registered for the elections, but many are yet to claim their PVCs, prompting the extension of the deadline for collection till Monday, 11th February, by INEC. We will interrogate all of this as we bring you 2019 election countdown on Weekend File. And uh, we, our guest tonight is uh, Festus Okoye, who is the staff of uh, INEC. I am Kirian Umayo. Let's do it again, and we kick start with the news. President Muhammad Buhari made strong commitment to maintain focus in the upholding his campaign promises uh, built mainly on improving the economy, fighting insecurity, and stemming corruption. Political correspondent Salihu Ablahi reports that President Buhari made the commitment at the APC mega rally which held in Lagos. <laughs> The Teslim Balogun Stadium in Surulere, where President Muhammad Buhari in 2014 won his presidential ticket, came alive as the people of Lagos played host to the APC campaign team. Party stalwarts enumerated the achievements of the Buhari administration and assured that the re-election effort is to secure the country by building a sustainable leadership structure. Today, Nigerian people, you know how much is your money in the bank accounts. Then we can share it between capital projects, salaries, and all. And that's why Mr. President has continually supported all our projects by even refunding some of our capital projects' money to make sure that we complete all these projects. Already, they are employing over, over 30,000 persons to construct just from Lagos to Abiokuta. As chairman of APC, I speak with authority. We are believers in one man, one woman. President Muhammad Buhari said, Whoever is trusted with public responsibility must account for it. If that is not done, we will eventually get a hold of them, take away what they have stolen, and get them in prison. This is our duty. This is our responsibility. And I assure you, we will continue to do it. Party flags were presented to the APC candidates in Lagos State. Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. The Oba of Lagos, Oba Riwano Akeolu, has expressed absolute confidence in the genuine commitment, sincerity of purpose, and ability of President Muhammad Buhari to sustain ongoing revolutionary initiatives towards taking Nigeria to enviable hearts amongst the Committee of Nations. Receiving the President at his palace on a courtesy visit, the Lagos monarch assured Nigerians that they will never regret investing in the promising march to the next level as the Nigerian leader has a lot more to offer. State House correspondent Adamusambo reports. 
Lagos, the center of excellence, is a 30th state to be visited by President Muhammad Buhari as part of his nationwide campaign for re-election. Getting the support of Lagos is without doubt crucial to the next level movement of the governing APC in view of his high level population as well as sophistication and influence in the politics of the Southwest. As the territory of the national leader of the party, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the level of acceptability and commitment to the Broom Revolution by the people is a matter of pride. <laughs> Receiving the president at his palace, the Oba of Lagos, Obarilwan Akeolu, who is also the chairman of the State Council of Obas and Chiefs, applauded him for maintaining his principles and focus on national salvation. The people of Lagos, he said, are well pleased with his leadership and significant impact on their lives, hence their desire for continuity. General Muhammad Ubarali is a highly respected person. Is yes, is yes, and is no, is no. Give Wali another chance, and you will see how Nigeria will move forward. He's a human being like all of us, but the rot of the past, we should not go back to that again. Things are getting better. But all Nigerians have to contribute in no small measure to assist the head of state. All will be well with you. President Muhammad Buhari commended the people of Lagos for not only sustaining their confidence in him, but also appreciating his administration's efforts at putting Nigeria on the path to sustainable future. I assure you that um, uh, I will continue to do my best. Uh, the promise we made through our party in 2015 they are so fundamental to Nigeria and about the economy, you mentioned it again. Impact of farming and how much we are saving by depending on ourselves. We have to insist on the government side for people to stop bringing rice and anybody who tried to bring rice will deal with him. Uh, we can feed ourselves and the money we save we put in infrastructure. I'm going out here with confidence that you prayed for me. But the most important thing, I know you mean it, because the last time you, you prayed, it worked. Special prayers were offered to the Almighty Allah to guard, guide, and grant the President victory at the polls, as well as the wisdom and good health to carry on with the faithful implementation of his people-centered policies and programs. From Lagos, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Also in Lagos, President Buhari inaugurated one of the most modern and best equipped cancer treatment centers in Africa, jointly powered by the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority and the Lagos University Teaching Hospital and has been inaugurated at Idi Araba. President Buhari promised to ensure that the model is replicated across Nigeria to bring quality and first-class healthcare services to those in need. Harrigan is Adam Sambo. Records show that up to 40% of funds spent by Nigerians on medical tourism is attributable to patients seeking treatment for cancer as a result of the increasing number of people suffering from the disease. In spite of that, however, Nigeria until now had only two functional radiotherapy machines. Apart from fulfilling his administration's promise of removing debilitating constraints on the sector, President Muhammad Buhari said the Cancer Treatment Center will go along way in saving and positively affecting the lives of Nigerians. Indeed, we are proud, but we recognize that this modest effort to address the gaps in our tertiary healthcare system alone is insufficient to address all the challenges faced by the sector. Today, we showcase what feats we can accomplish when we are together unrelenting in our effort to deliver a common objective. No one ever prays to be diagnosed with cancer, but if they are, what we have made possible here today is, that, is the hope that a true chance of survival and good quality of life becomes part of the story 
of many Nigerian patients with cancer. There are about 500 people who die from cancer in Nigeria daily, and we can save them through this. With many more Nigerians having access to high-quality treatment, President Buhari said the government will continue to push hard to raise awareness about cancer, educate the people, and facilitate early diagnosis. The Cancer Treatment Center, built at $10 million by the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority as part of its strategic investment in critical areas of healthcare, has the capacity to treat 3,000 patients per annum. We have also commenced the construction of a training facility next door which will serve as a resource center supported by veteran medical systems, not just for the staff of NSIU, but for other cancer centers we plan to build and for college professionals across Nigeria. We have earned the bragging rights to say that no Nigerian cancer patient needs to travel abroad again to receive treatment that is easily available here. In the coming months, two modern medical diagnostic centers located in the Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital Kano and the Federal Medical Center Umuahia Abia State are to be inaugurated to bring additional investments to Nigeria's healthcare sector. Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Thank you, Ademo. President Muhammadu Buhari also took out time to meet with the organized private sector in Lagos, where he restated federal government's intention to continue to invest in infrastructure, security, and economic development. The president said the goal uh, is to create more enabling environment for business to thrive in the country. State House correspondent Jida Onifade reports. Government and the private sector are necessary partners, President Muhammad Wari says, as he addresses the organized private sector before embarking on his campaign in Lagos towards the 2019 general elections. The president explains that the commitment of the administration is reflected in the resources it's providing for infrastructure, which in 2016-2017 capital expenditure was up to 20.7 trillion naira, while over 800 billion naira has been released under the current budget. And this is complemented by the injection of $650 million Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, which will focus initially on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the second Niger Bridge, the Abuja Kano Expressway, and the Mambila Hydropower Plant. With your continued support, we are determined to increase the pace and to continue to change Nigeria for better. Among those attending this meeting are members of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprises. The micro, small, and medium enterprises are the direct beneficiaries of government empowerment and enterprise program, which is providing interest-free credit to petty traders, farmers, and artisans. This next day was exciting, very interesting, and a lot of fun. We won't earn more money than the one we were doing before. Fantastically, we really trust him. He, he brought out out of the, the woods, and now the economy is moving and is, 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 is booming. Everywhere you can see is business. Business is going on very well. The message has been for every Nigerian to exploit the environment, seek for the opportunities therein, and engage in one business or the other and contribute meaningfully to the economy. In Lagos, Jude Onifade, NT News. Ohnes and Dibo and three other Igbo Sushu cultural groups have reaffirmed their unshakable resolve to work assiduously towards getting President Muhammad Buhari re-elected. Uh, during a solidarity visit to the President, the General Secretary of Ohaneze Ndibo Uche Okuku formally apologized to the Nigerian leader for the recent unguided utterances by some members of uh, the group whom he said are already being sanctioned. State House correspondent again Adam Sambo reports. Apart from the leadership of Ohane Zendibo, there were also World Igbo Congress, World Igbo Union, as well as Ndibo delegates comprising Igbo leaders from the 19 northern states of the country. They were all unanimous in their submissions that President Muhammad Buhari has demonstrated genuine faith in Nigeria and commitment to a sustainable future and therefore worthy of their trust, confidence and support for re-election. And for us to march here is to prove to you that the new face of Igbo land have come. Igbos in the 19 Northern States and Abuja 
are with you. And our votes will reflect it on the 16th of February 2019. Because the Igbos, wherever they are, will vote for you massively. President Muhammad Buhari commended members of their groups for their sense of patriotism as well as commitment to building bridges across ethnic and religious divides. Diversity, he said, is Nigeria's biggest asset which must be harnessed and applied positively for nation building as the governing APC continues to provide a level playing field for all. As you all know the key issues that affect our country today are insecurity, economic problem, employment and so on, and corruption that solely relies on single revenue source. These issues impact on all Nigerians, regardless of tribe and religion. The perpetrators and victims of corruption and terrorism are from all tribes and religions. Poverty and unemployment also cuts across all tribes and religions. We also do not discriminate in our response. He promised to sustain efforts at diminishing corruption, diversifying the economy, executing critical infrastructure projects across Nigeria, and supporting the less privileged. Our programs are all over the country, and by the grace of God, we will continue to do more. Please be rest assured that my commitment to creating a peaceful, inclusive, and corruption-free Nigeria for all Nigerians remain as strong as ever. You know, our people have been saying that if you greet somebody for the little he has done, you are giving him the energy to do more for you. So that is what these people came to do today. They came and thanked him and told him to continue that they are behind him. The president noted the request made by the group saying he will do his best towards meeting them. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress APC has continued to garner support from various groups across the country. The latest group to endorse President Buhari is, is a team is known as the Kongia the Tijan Ariwa Initiative. The group says the endorsement is to enable the Buhari administration to take the country to the next level of prosperity. Here is Salihu with the rest of the story. As the political parties are busy campaigning for votes ahead of next week presidential polls, so also are the citizenry coming out to align with their preferred presidential candidates. The Kungiarudat Jan Ariwa Initiative, which means the group of northern elders converged on Abuja to support the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari and debunk any contrary view to this position. And that our candidate for the election is President Muhammad Buhari. We must come together to have level-headed leadership. I appreciate the effort that he has been making over the three and a half years. Uh, politics is about ideology, about who you want to, to, to support. So there's nothing wrong with some people supporting Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Members promise to carry on with grassroots mobilization to ensure the success of APC and its candidates at the forthcoming elections. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And women and youth are not left out in rallying support for the re-election of President Buhari and indeed APC candidates vying for elective posts. State House correspondent Ali Kabir reports that the Women and Youth presidential campaign team led by wife of the President, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, have resolved to take the door-to-door -door campaign to the grassroots to canvass more support for the President. In the early hours of Saturday, the 9th of February, the supporters of President Muhammad Buhari converged on unity founts in Abuja in response to the call of the wife of the President Aisha Muhammad Buhari under the platform of Women and Youth Presidential Campaign Team. Buhari supporters from across the country comprising members of the Buhari Support Organization BOS, Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria, Together Nigeria Group, Buhari Presidential Campaign Council, Buhari Oshinbajo Youth Advocacy Group, Project 4 plus 4, among others, have turned out in thousands, propagating the good policies and programs of President Buhari 
which they say deserves to be given a second chance for continuity and development. The two-kilometer walk which started from Unity Fountain was led by the wife of the Vice President Dolapo Shimbajo who stood in for Mrs. Buhari. The procession passed through three arm zone and terminated at Eagle Square. The central message was the emphasis of the eligible voters to come out en masse and cast their vote for President Muhammad Buhari in order to move to the next level. Our president is for everybody. Only yesterday, a train left Lagos and arrived in Abelkuta. We have never seen it in a long time. He's a man of honor. He's a man of integrity, impeccable character, impeccable honesty, and hard work. In Abuja, Ali Ukabir, NTA News. Now let's turn attention to other parties. Commitment to promote an open and competitive economy dominates the campaigns by PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar as he visits more constituencies. Uh, Najatu Tijani has an update from different locations. Alhaji Abubakar dances to a tune which he and his supporters seem to know well. In Calabar, Paul Abel reports that this cordial relationship has bred expectations from both sides. I am going to be a transitional government handing over to the youth and women of this country. It is not much different in Benwe and Katsina states where Bem Hanya and Abdul Malik Hassan report that Alhaji Atiku Abubakar has promised that by 2025, the manufacturing sector's output shall be expanded from 9% to 30% of gross domestic product to achieve a diversified economy. The PDP presidential candidate released his 45-point manifesto tagged the Atiku plan in November 2018, the manifesto continues to form the core of his campaign visits. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, has expressed satisfaction with the level of work done on the Lagos Abiyokuta double standard gauge rail track. Lukman Adefeso reports that the minister made this known during a test run of the ongoing rail projects in the company of Governor Ibikunle Amosi of Ogun State. As early as 7 in the morning, Abe Okute bound passengers are eagerly waiting to board the train on a test run from Iju in Lagos to Ladere in Abe Okuta city. The Minister of Transportation in company of the Ogun State Governor, the Yalaki of Egba Land and some National Assembly members during the train ride explained that Nigeria is on the path to greatness and sustainable development. What about one year is the track is almost completed, but tracks don't make real. You have communication and funds are tied to those assignments. And uh, for, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, people are not uh, reckless about Nigerian resources. In the 60s, years, 70s, we enjoyed this. Somehow everything went uh, muddy bond. He has uh, resuscitated, he has revitalized it. So uh, kudos to him. Well, this is a test run, and I believe this is the last test run that um, it will make infrastructural development, particularly as it relates to roads and rail priorities. On behalf of the users in Egbaland, on behalf of my people who are going to benefit immensely from this project, I want to thank the government of President Muhammad Buhari. Lagos Abeokuta band passengers are to enjoy free train ride for the next three months. All right, now, uh, not less than 70 political parties are feeding candidates for different elective positions in the 2019 general elections, just seven days away. Stay tuned for further analysis on the preparedness of stakeholders to take part in the elections. This is we can file the place for news views and analysis on the largest tv network in africa i'll be back very shortly the u.n compound houses about 400 employees
The Nigerian capital Abuja is still reeling from Monday morning's rush hour bomb. If the group did carry out the attack, it would be one of its worst. Two suicide bombings in Nigeria. One targeted a convoy carrying Nigeria's main opposition leader. Gun attack on the central mosque in North Nigeria's biggest city, Kano. In the strength, yeah, that comes from the hard knocks that life throws at us. And we Nigerians, we know all about that. Oh, a deadly you don't stay down, you get up and fight. Sure, it's about speed, technique, quality of the punches, reach. But the real fight is with myself. It's the power, but it's the speed as well. But I can't carry this heavyweight title by myself. There's always got to be someone in my corner. And that's why I believe in GLOW. We have that same tenacity, that Nigerian fighting spirit that makes us game changers. You have to dig deep to be a world champion. But yeah, we Nigerians, yeah, we know all about that. What a fight! GLOW, a halo. Heavyweight champion of the world! Nigerian youth have seen the positive effects of the Uncle Borrowers program of the Buhari administration, which has improved the country's food security. The homegrown school feeding program is catching for over 9 million pupils, engaging and empowering cooks and farmers. What about the 10 billion naira youth entrepreneurship support project to empower youth with startup loans for businesses? We connect to the next level as more than a million market women, traders, artisans, and farmers from all over Nigeria are getting empowered through interest free trader money scheme. Nigeria is proudly in the list of top 10 reforming economies in the world, moving 24 places upwards in the World Bank's ease of doing business. We are making progress. The deaths from terrorism in Nigeria has dropped by 80% according to the Global Terrorism Index. Nigeria is making progress in the fight against corruption. The whistleblowing policy has helped recover looted funds. The enforcement of TAC brought about fiscal discipline, transparency and accountability in government revenue, power generation and distribution in Nigeria. Nigeria has improved tremendously. The off-grid power project has not gone unnoticed. Nigerian youth, let's connect to the next level. This message is powered by Dr. Tony Moy, Director Youth Mobilization Presidential Campaign Council. During the 2019 elections slated for February 16, 2019 for presidential and national assembly elections and March 2, 2019 for governorship and state assembly elections, thousands of Nigerians will be serving as electoral officials. These include youth corps members who will be serving as presiding and assistant presiding officers. Other Nigerians will work as coalition officers and returning officers. In addition, many officials of INEC will be in the field supervising the elections and providing backup support. Fellow Nigerians, it is our collective duty to protect election officials before, during and after elections. We should not allow anyone attack electoral officials. Our young youth core members participating must be protected wherever they are serving. We also want to make it abundantly clear that security agencies will be present and ready to deal with anybody or group of persons with attempt to foment trouble or compromise the safety and well-being of its officials. This message is from Independent National Electoral Commission INEC, making your vote count and consolidating our democracy. Oh yes, President Muhammad Buhari has reduced the registration fees for NECO examinations. He has reduced senior school certificate examination fee from 11,350 Naira to 9,850 Naira. Basic education certificate examination fee from 6,000 Naira to 4,000 Naira. Common entrance examination fee from 5,000 Naira to 2,500. And guess what? The era of impersonation is over. The council has designed a biometric verification device for screening candidates before going into the examination halls or centers.
computers, the scratch card purchase has been eliminated. You can now log online to get all required information from our website www.neco.gov.ng. Accredited schools can now go to our state offices to get the registration manuals for offline registration. This message is brought to you by National Examination Council, NECO. Madam, that's it. Those narrows are enough. Hi, dear. Mm. Helen, you've got so much even after spending so little. Savings is such a necessity. You save everywhere, but here you lose it all. How? With this? Impossible. New ticker Apic 10X. Even after applying up to one liter of your solution multiple times, you won't get the same cleaning that Apic gives you in a single round. And the expense? Far less compared to your one liter of solution. New ticker Apic. Top and cleaning. Top and savings. <laughs> 2019, at Liku Abubaka. See, we don't articulate. Get articulated. I go follow the man where I go follow the man where I I go follow the man where I go create employment. I go follow the man where I go stop the hunger. I go fall for the movement. We go make Nigeria walk again. I don't articulate. My Yoruba people don't articulate. I get that articulate. I wish I people don't articulate. Doma, Tifi, Igala, Ishakiri, Lupe, Maduri. Everybody don't articulate. For a better Nigeria, vote Atiku Abubakar for president 2019. <laughs> And the Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Belo Dambazao, uh, says the present administration is committed to addressing Nigeria's internal security challenges. The minister made the statement while unveiling a new emergency mobile alert system that will address the nation's internal security challenges. Mujanatu Adam Said reports. Of this logo you click on, we lead you to their website okay. where you can also get relevant information about that service. For, instance, For some time now, Nigeria has been grappling with internal security challenges ranging from kidnapping, farmers' headers clashes, communal conflict, among other security challenges. The idea of this emergency response alert system is to report issues of safety and internal insecurity directly to the Ministry of Interior by all Nigerians who subscribe to the mobile app. Everything we do, uh, we can do to protect our borders during elections, we do. The minister, however, said lack of collaboration and cooperation among security agencies before the coming of the present administration was a challenge that has given the ministry a cause for concern. The security situation room will be monitored continuously on a daily basis. In Abuja, Murjana to Adam Said, NTA News. In Gwembe, more than 2,000 farmers have been empowered with implements under the Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk-Sharing System for Agricultural Lending to improve agriculture in the country. Fathia Awa Aba tells us more. It 
is the second month of the year 2019 and already farmers have begun to mobilize in anticipation of a fruitful year. Nasal is moving proactively to ensure this happens in its capacity as participating financial institution in the Anchor Borrowers Program, ABP, with the timely distribution of necessary inputs. The program is one of the government's agricultural transformation scheme designed to increase the productivity of the sector. 1,729 rice and maize farmers in Kumbi State are beneficiaries of this water pump and other inputs aimed at improving dry season farming. The goal of NISAL is to trigger an agricultural industrialization process through increased production and process of the greater part of what is produced to boost economic earnings across the value chain. The farmers are optimistic that with the prediction of the shortage raining season this year, the impact will be minimal as they are better equipped for the longer dry season. Uh, NASA is going down to the roots to meet the local farmers and give them a kind of support. 2017 was a flood, there was a serious flood, then 2018 was a drought and Nayek has done very well. We received about uh, 3 million for the compensation in 2018. Nasal is currently completing ABP input distribution in four states of the Northeast, which are Gombe, Barunu, Taraba, and Adamawa. In Gombe, Fatia Walapa, NTA News. We take another break now. Uh, when we return, we shall go into the conversation segment. Stay with us. What does next level mean? Simple. Economic growth. Since President Buhari spent the first term focusing on fixing security and corruption, he has built the foundation for growing our economy. And in his second term, it will focus on creating jobs, millions of jobs. We will invest in a huge infrastructure development plan, using rail and road to connect every major city in Nigeria. This means travel for people will be cheaper, goods will be cheaper, and it will provide over a million jobs in construction, logistics, maintenance, and services. This means more money in your pocket, which is a very definition of economic growth. By creating these jobs, we shall increase prosperity and decrease poverty. Make the right choice. Vote for Buhari. We are building a strong Nigerian economy for all. Activate your life. Be who you want to be. an active life with the power of vegetables and fruits. Chivita Active. Be active. Do more. Helen! Hey, where's your mom? Today is her toilet day. What? <gasps> Helen! Toilet day? Tomorrow you're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with all this, it still won't be party ready. Impossible! Challenge? New ticker Halfback 10X. Even if you use this solution 10 times, it won't give you the same cleaning like Apex. Because it's new ticker formulation sticks to the bowl better, giving you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow! New Apex 10X gives me the freedom from toilet day. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque, Please realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during, and after the elections, what are you saying to those who worship in your church and at your mosque? Yes, every Sunday and every Friday, all of us, Muslims and Christians alike, troop out to our various places of worship to hear God speak through our pastors and imams. As a pastor, as imams, you owe it a duty to God and to this nation towards ensuring peace before, during, and after the general elections. Speak to those who worship under you. Encourage them to exercise their civic responsibility peacefully. Let's join hands to ensure peaceful general elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. From our wonderful family, meet our active triplets. Mixology, for example, mixes well with drinks. Then enjoy every quick meal with Slurp It Off. And everywhere you go, there is Gogurt. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy, 
Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. Manager people, make we make the right choice, see yo. Make we vote for a man of integrity. Hey, so make we gather together and make it this change. You walk my people of Niger, yeah. Together we go carry Niger to the next level. Niger don't decide. Vote for Babuari. Babuari, the man of integrity, yeah. Hey, vote for Babuari. Man, we no cut off, we no go chop our money. Agriculture, the next level, fight corruption, the next level, good roads, to the next level, electricity, to the next level, revenue, with the next level, empower, the next level, we got money, for good health we go, my people, my people, for the next level, ABC, next level, Niger people, make we all come out to vote Baba. This message is from Buhari Next Level Group. National Woman Leader, APC. Now we start our countdown from Ibada, where our correspondent Shola Saeed reports that stakeholders have assured of credible free and fair polls, but that logistics are being fine tuned. Days to the conduct of the general elections across the country. Oyo State Resident Electoral Commissioner says necessary measures have been taken and electoral materials needed for the smooth conduct of the elections in the state received. We received all the consignment for our non-sensitive materials. We have received more than enough smart card reader and all other materials we have received. We are already moving them to various local government. After I finish with them here, they will go back to their division and debrief their officers. What and what is expected of us? This is key to elections because in peaceful elections, there are no winners and there are no losers. Reports from some parts of the zone also indicate that INEC and eligible voters are prepared for the elections as people are able to collect their permanent voter cards to enable them vote for the candidates of their choice. We are getting ready. Even if election is coming, is coming tomorrow, we are 100% ready. They should make sure that the vote of the people is not tampered with from a polling booth to collection center. Everything must be fair. People are warned to avoid violence and acts that are capable of disrupting the smooth conduct of the election in Ibadan. Shola Wahid, NTA News. And the message from security operatives in Burundi State is that uh, there is no cause for alarm. This is because the Independent National Electric Commission and security agencies in the state have concluded arrangements to ensure that no one, including internally displaced persons, are disenfranchised during next week's election. Maimuna Garba reports. Preparations are on top gear with barely few days to the commencement of the 2019 general elections. Already sensitive materials have started arriving at INEC headquarters in Maiduguri, while configuring of card readers and printing of electronic voters' register are ongoing. Already, out of the recently over 500,000 PVCs printed, about 300,000 have so far been collected, and training of over 22,000 ad hoc staff have been concluded. The IDPs that we have, you know, we have made adequate arrangement for security, in collaboration with the security agencies, police and the military. And at the same time, we made arrangement of how they can vote orderly without any hitch. There are parts of uh, the state where uh, military operations are still going on. 
Elections in these uh, local government areas are most likely to be held in IDP camps, in Medjugorje Metropolis and other parts of the state. What we did was to send our undercover personnel to all these identified polling units. With these measures put in place by the security personnel and INEC, it is expected that the conduct of the election will be successful. In my degree, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. And uh, with me in the studio to discuss the issues concerning election is uh, Festo Sukwe, is the INEC Commissioner, Publicity and Voter Education. Good evening and welcome. Thank you so much. Just seven days away from the elections, how prepared is the Commission in terms of uh, supply of materials and uh, logistics? Well, uh, we are on the home stretch. Uh, the materials required uh, for the conduct of the 2019 elections are gradually um, moving to the various states. Uh, you know, we have uh, both sensitive and non-sensitive materials. In terms of non-sensitive materials, uh, voting cubicles, ballot boxes, and the rest of them, uh, most of them have left the zonal stores of the Independent National Electoral Commission and have moved to the various states and to the local governments. Uh, we have also supplied uh, the smart card readers uh, to the um, various uh, states. Uh, the smart card readers are being charged and um, get being, they, they are getting them ready uh, for the 2019 general elections. So in terms of non-sensitive materials, I think we are, we are good to go. Most of the materials have arrived at their destinations. In terms of the sensitive materials, uh, ballot papers, um, uh, resources and so on. Uh, the central bank offices in the various states are presently taking delivery of uh, the um, sensitive materials uh, for the conduct of the first elections, that is the presidential elections and the national assembly elections. Uh, so we are, we are gradually getting ready. Uh, we had a, had a marathon meeting with uh, all the resident electoral commissioners um, uh, since uh, Wednesday and most of the resident electoral commissioners uh, left Abuja this morning for the various states. We wanted to be sure that all the states are ready and we wanted to know the state of uh, readiness of all the, all, the, all, the, all the resident electoral commissioners and all the states. So they gave an account of the materials they have received in terms of non-sensitive materials and also in terms of the preparations they have made in terms of training of electoral personnel and other ad hoc staff uh, for the 2019 elections. Now what about security arrangement? Well, uh, we are also um, on top of the security arrangements. At the national level, we have been holding meetings um, with the various security, heads of the various security agencies uh, under the auspices of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security. And this has also been cascaded down uh, to the states and to the local government levels. Uh, we've had series of meetings with the Inspector General of Police and all the police commissioners. Uh, we've also had the meetings with the Federal Road Safety Commission and all the heads of other security agencies. Um, and everybody has pledged that since election is a multi-stakeholder venture, that people should be very professional and be very, very ethical in the handling and management of the 2019 elections. All right, no PVC, no voting. Now, what's the current level of a collection of PVCs? Well, uh, the, the, the collection of PVCs uh, has been uh, slightly challenging for the Commission. You know that uh, uh, between the 27th day of April 2017 and uh, uh, the 31st day of August uh, 2018, the Commission carried out what we call a, a continuous registration of voters. And within this particular period, we registered a total of 14,283,734 new registrants or new, new voters. And all the casts of these categories of um, uh, voters were printed by the Independent National Electoral Commission and delivered to the various states and to the various local governments. And because of the difficulty people were having in terms of collecting these PVCs, we decided to cascade uh, the collection of the PVCs to the various pooling units when we did what we call the display of the voters register. Thereafter, we still cascaded it to the 8,809 uh, registration areas. Uh, but because of the challenges we have, um, the collection was supposed to end yesterday. The commission met and decided that we needed to extend the collection of PVCs up to the close of work on, on Monday. So to that particular extent, all the resident electoral commissioners have been directed and all the electoral officers in all the local governments have been directed uh, to open 
the offices for the collection of PVCs between uh, 9 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening up to, up to Monday. But if I may ask you, sorry, yes. you know, what, what, some Nigerians, what, I wonder, you know, why uh, there should be deadline for it. I mean, some people are saying that for eight hours to election is okay. So why the why is commission putting a deadline? No, there, there must be a cut-off period to enable the commission to uh, prepare for the conduct of the elections. We cannot have a situation where uh, people will still be collecting their PVCs on election day. Moreover... No, for eight hours before election. Yeah, moreover, the different political parties have insisted that they, there should be some level of certainty in terms of the number of PVCs that have um, been collected and the number of PVCs that have not been collected. So we have an agreement with the various political parties and with the key stakeholders that at a certain period, all the uncollected PVCs will be recorded uh, and we give a, an account of them, and then they will be deposited with the central bank for safekeeping pending the conclusion of the elections. Thereafter, the collection of PVCs uh, will continue. So we want to have some level of certainty. We want to have some level of transparency in terms of the collection of PVCs by the various, um, uh, by all the registered all voters. Now, we were told that uh, there are some modifications in the guidelines. Uh, tell yes. us about that. Well, well uh, part of the things we have done, uh, as you know, uh, the both the Constitution and the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, gives the Independent National Electoral Commission the power and the mandate and the authority uh, to um, bring up guidelines uh, or regulations for the conduct of elections. So, so based on that, the Independent National Electoral Commission had various consultations, very robust consultations with political parties, civil society groups, the security and the media, and drew up uh, regulations and guidelines for the conduct of this election. Part of the issues in those guidelines are one, that we are going to have what we call continuous accreditation and voting. In other words, there won't be any separation between accreditation of voters and voting. Everything will take place simultaneously. Uh, that is one. Secondly, in the guidelines, only persons with permanent voters' cards issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission and uh, whose names are on the voters' register will be allowed to vote in this election. Thirdly, in the guidelines, we have also given priority to visibly pregnant women, uh, persons with disability, and the aged to vote uh, during the election. So they will be given priority in terms of the voting procedure. We have also made it possible for uh, the uh, presiding officers to after sorting the votes and counting, for them to fill what we call from EC60E, uh, containing the scores of all the political parties and paste in a conspicuous place at the, at the polling unit so that everybody can see what has transpired at the polling units and everybody will be in a position to copy such things. Now, for in terms of the collection of results, we have made it very clear that no collection officer will be allowed to make a phone call or receive con phone call during the collection of results. Uh, this to, is to ensure that nobody distracts them and that they focus principally and fundamentally on the job they have been asked to do. So these are some of the issues and some of the new challenges, uh, new innovations now, in the, in now, the now we have uh, you have released seven steps in the voting process. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, well uh, part, of, part of those steps uh, that enables you to vote is that, one, for you to vote in this election, you must be a registered voter. If you are not a registered voter, you don't even need to near the polling units at all. Secondly, for you to, be, to vote in this election, you must possess the permanent voter's card issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission. The third is that you must physically go to the polling units yourself with your permanent voter's card. And the smart card reader must be used for the conduct of the elections. So the smart card reader will verify your voter's card to make sure that the card you have come into the polling unit with was issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Thereafter, the presiding officer will check the voter's register to match the information on your voter's card with the information on the voter's register. Then thereafter, the smart card reader will authenticate your biometrics. Now, if for any reason the smart card reader is unable to authenticate your biometrics, you will still be allowed to vote. But the party agents at the polling units will be consulted in relation to what the challenges are. Thereafter, you will be asked to 
make a thumbprint by the side of the voters register where your picture is and you will also be asked to provide uh, your, your telephone number for purposes of forensic audit when you have completed all these processes then you will be given a ballot paper to go and vote. To go and vote. Oh, all right. As, yes. as, as a round off, you know, yes. vote buying is now a serious issue, you yes. know, and it's a new, it's a new phenomenon. You know, just briefly, please. Yes. And uh, what, what have you done to mitigate it? Well, uh, we have reconfigured the architecture of the pooling unit. Secondly, we have also introduced what we call the the the, the um, uh, uh, we have banned the use of mobile phones inside the pooling cubicle. Mm. And, and thirdly, we have also introduced the, uh, uh, the, the, the folding and flattening method of the, of, of, of the ballot papers yeah. to All make right. sure that people mm. do not uh, abuse the secrecy of the vote. All right, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I will wish you well. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, yes. we've been speaking with uh, Festus Okoye, the INEC Commissioner of Publicity and Voter Education. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 2019. Atiku Abu Baka. See, we don't articulate. Get articulated. I go follow the man where Sabi to go. I go follow the man where Sabi to go. I go follow the man where go create employment. I go follow the man where go study on that. I go follow the movement where go make Nigeria work again. I don't articulate. My Yoruba people don't articulate. Don't get that articulate. I wish I people don't articulate. Oh, Doma, Tifi, Igala, Ishakiri, Lupe, Manuri. Everybody don't articulate. For a better Nigeria, vote Atiku Abubakar for president 2019. I was a little girl. I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a mother and woman that still trusts the secrets passed down to me. It's Jik, of course. The original trusted bleach, which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's a little secret. It's no secret. It's Jik's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jik it. And after successive administrations, can I have the remote? Please, it's time to watch my favorite channel. I'm so sorry, my dear. I really need to continue watching this program on the Nigerian economy. All this talk about our economy, so what is really going? A lot has happened over the last three years. Really? Mm -hmm. Federal government's policies on prudent management of funds and foreign exchange, efficient collection of taxes and custom duties. TSA, BVN, Ghost Workers Elimination, Procurement Process, Empowerment of Anti-Corruption Agencies, and the diversification of the economy. Okay, so the results? Now, all this hmm, has allowed the policies increase our foreign exchange reserve and internally generated revenue, blocked leakages, provided funds to execute new projects nationwide and complete projects abandoned by past administration. I didn't know all this, so... Now you know. <laughs> the growth of the Nigerian economy is a solid commitment of the federal government. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Just reaching us, a fuel leading tanker this evening exploded in Oka and Ambra State, leaving many houses and a market raised. Here are clips of the inferno as sent in by our correspondent Joy Iluebu. Yeah, 
And uh, that, of course, concludes our program for today. Thank you for watching, and join us again next week for another edition of Weekend File.